Primo, I think, you know, like you said, got off to a rocky start, but found found some ways to get some playmaking in, had five five assists tonight, did have three turnovers, um, you know, and wasn't able to hit a three as well and went three for 11 overall. Um, but I feel like also watching Primo, and this is kind of what I mentioned after the preseason games, I feel like it, even though it was still a struggle for him tonight, there were some things that looked a little bit more controlled in comparison to last season. Um, and maybe that's that sounds crazy. And some of you on the comments may think I'm crazy for saying that. But I feel like I can see like where he's kind of taken a step forward in his development, just in terms of his presence on the court. I think everything about him improved. The only thing that is still a struggle is his just, execution. <laughs> yeah, I mean, execution. And, and it still feels like he's almost in... I mean, there's a difference, I guess, between confidence and pace so he has the confidence but i feel like his pace is almost too comfortable Mm -hmm. if that makes sense he's too loosey-goosey with it because he knows he's so good and he has the confidence to make some good shots and be a good ball handler that he gets too loose coming off screen and that's where the turnovers even happen i forget when you're mentioning this i'm there's a picture of him driving inside through two defenders popping in my head where he lost it yeah it, it just kind of feels like he's playing pickup you know, and he's like, he knows he's the best guy on the court. So, you know, when you play pickup and there's a guy that's obviously right. better, he's kind of going through the motions. It feels like I don't I'm not saying that he doesn't have the motor, you know, mm-hmm. of, of a great player. I'm just saying it feels like he needs to tighten those things up and mentally be more, you know, aggressive and and, and not as loosey goosey with the ball. And if he can just make that adjustment, I think he'll be a lot better because he does have the skill set and the confidence. It's just kind of, you know twisting that screwdriver a little bit more we saw him hit some floaters too which i feel Mm -hmm. like wasn't i I think he missed one too but like that that wasn't something that i remembered seeing much from him um just in years prior um the other thing you got to remember with primo is he's still 19 like Mm -hmm. (laughs) he's basically the age of all the other rookies we drafted so you kind of got to look at him yes it's his second year and they're hyping him up on the broadcast and everybody's hyping him up because it's we drafted him with the 11th pick you know, when he was supposed to be a projected second round pick, right? And there's all this hype from Brian Wright and everything, but it's like, still with Primo, like, really? Like, I I feel like we can't judge him, like, completely until, like, the end of his rookie contract, just because he's so young. Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like his development is still on track. Like, and especially in the situation that he's in, like, well, first of all, once again, tonight was game one, so... This really wasn't surprising to me. Like a bunch of turnovers with a mm, team full of basic, basically teenagers. Like it's like our man Noah per- Perez said earlier. I'm mentally prepared for the tank, um, and so like I'm just not really ready to draw like a bunch of conclusions off him. You know, just off this one game. So, uh, you yeah. know, I, after this season or maybe like midway through, you know, after a month is in, if this is still going on and he's just completely turnover prone, then maybe that's when we can start to, you know, hey, we should pay attention to this. But um, just just after game one, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna, like that still might happen, Ethan, and it might not be his fault. Like it might just be literally the context of being on one of the worst teams in the league and you're 19. You know what I mean? Yeah. Plus, the expectations have been totally flipped for him. When he was drafted, the expectation was you're going to be an off-ball shooter and play shooting guard next to DeJounte Murray and or Trey Jones. With the trade of DeJounte Murray, and they think that he has the potential to be a playmaking point guard and the elevation of Trey Jones in the starting lineup, all of a sudden he's the primary ball handler and playmaker for that second unit. He's never really played Mm -hmm. that position before, as far as I know. Not in Alabama, not with the Spurs. Maybe a little bit in Austin. But... That's a completely different role than what we thought he would have. So it's it's, it's going to take even longer now because we technically don't know if he has that capability yet. We think he does. We hope he does. There's 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 glimpses of that, but we don't mm-hmm. have a, a large enough sample size or a large enough development track for, for us to tell yet. And to, to address MVZ's age 19 excuse can't last forever, you're right. It'll last one year until he's 20, and then it'll be... <laughs> The dude's <laughs> the little beast. Oh my gosh. But yeah, you know, you just, it's kind of like, think about like, I don't know. It, my memory may be failing here, but what kind of happened with, with Devin Booker? Like how long did it take him for his career to take off? Well, I think it took a year. Keep talking. 
I believe for him to become a scorer, like like mm-hmm. a, like a, like was a, a year, maybe two years. I think in 2017 was when he had his his 70 point game. He was drafted mm-hmm. in 2015, so about two years. But then okay. he wasn't winning until 2020. So it took him five years to actually win, and that was with the addition of Chris Paul. So, well, I think we're both a little bit. A little bit wrong here. Was he instantly a scorer? I don't no, know. No, no, no. He oh. so he had fourteen uh, coming straight out. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't have the greatest percentages, but then in year two he was he did score twenty two points per game. Granted, though, like, and this is this kind of still this does go to Mez's point a little bit. Like, it can't be an excuse forever because mm-hmm. Devin Booker was nineteen when he was scoring twenty two points. Um, and if we kind of view him in that same lens, then you know he should have a breakout year, but. Also, just the context of the way the Spurs run things, like it's not as easy for like some of those stats to come up. Where when you look at this Devin Booker, like he was the number one dude on a bad Sun team, Suns team for like four or five years, like you were talking about, right? Mm. But I don't know. The more we're talking about this comparison, the more it just makes me feel like <laughs> Primo is not going to be Devin Booker. Well, um, a, a better comparison would be. I, I mean, it's not a better comparison. It's actually worse, but. Kobe wasn't Kobe until like year three or year four. Mm-hmm. He didn't average more than 12 points a game or something like that. He barely, yeah. barely played airballed threes in the playoffs, you know, couldn't, could barely get minutes. And then all of a sudden he becomes the greatest shooting guard next to Michael Jordan, of course. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to put, I don't actually think Primo, I don't want to put too much pressure on the kid because we really haven't seen much. All right. we know is that the, the front office and pop think very highly of him. And his teammates think fairly highly of him. And he's gotten significant minutes at 19 years old. There's other people like outside of the Spurs too that like, yeah. thought that was a steal too. And he's got a really strong body. He's clearly been putting in work. He, only time will tell. This is only game one. He had a rough summer league. He had a pretty rough preseason until those last two games where he kind of turned it up a right. little bit. Let's just give him a chance. We gave Lonnie Walker like three or four years. Right. And he barely improved, if at all. You know and he's I mean? kind of and he's kind of ahead of where like I mean, well, he's definitely ahead of where Lonnie was because he's yeah. been in the NBA <laughs> for yeah. you know exactly. when he was younger. But And we're not trying to win either. You know, yeah. I'm not too I'm not too worried about it. He will develop. We will have to experience some pretty, you know, uncomfortable basketball for the next year or two. <laughs> but that's just is what it is. Right. Yeah. 